Looking to find that their brush with Hurricane Aaron wasn't nearly as bad as they'd expected. With wind gusts of up to 100 miles an hour, Aaron hit land shortly after 1 o'clock this morning and battered about 70 miles of coastline north of Palm Beach. But Aaron has since lost a lot of punch and has now been downgraded to a tropical storm today, Wednesday, August 2nd, 1995. From NBC News, this is Today with Bryant Gumbel and Katie Curran. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. When Aaron came ashore early this morning, it did so in Vero Beach, Florida, bringing uh, with it some heavy winds. But as you can see, things are relatively calm in Vero Beach right now. And just a little bit north of Vero, up in Satellite Beach, which is just south of Cape Canaveral, it is, uh, as you can see, still a little windy there. But... Uh, as we're reporting now, light winds, relatively calm, no serious injuries being reported, and no dangerous storm surges either. So I guess the news is, is basically pretty good as That's we greet right. you on this Wednesday morning. Her bark was worse than her bite, but it's still not a good day for a morning swim. And no, it, it isn't. Areas. It isn't. A tropical storm is still going to leave an awful lot of rainfall, and there are some concerns about the, the surges involved. But uh, but basically, you're right. The news is, is very good this morning. We're going to get caught up at the news desk in, in just a little bit. And then following that in this half hour, we're going to take a look at Erin's uh, punch and how much she might still have left. We'll go to the National Hurricane Center, and then we'll go down to Florida to talk with a lot of the residents there who are trying to cope with Aaron. Katie? On a very different note, Bryant, it was a story that riveted the nation for months, and now Susan Smith is a notorious household name. Her former husband, David Smith, has written a book about the ordeal called Beyond All Reason, My Life with St Susan Smith. He, of course, is the father of those two young boys she murdered. We're going to be talking with David in our second half hour this morning. Okay, we're going to get a report on the uh, troubling and suspicious moves of Timothy McVeigh prior to the Oklahoma City bombing. Evidently, he went to a drag strip in Kansas, and uh, some of what he did there is, uh, is very troubling. And those folks tried to get the attention of the authorities, and they yeah. were basically yeah. ignored. Yeah, basically, you're right. We're also going to show you where some folks are taking their dream vacation these days. We have a lot to get to. Let's go to the news desk. Get started with Matt Lauer. Matt, good morning. All right, Brian and Katie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. After stirring up memories of Hurricane Andrew and fraying some nerves in southern Florida, Hurricane Aaron did storm ashore early this morning. Aaron hit the central Florida coast with heavy rain and winds gusting up to 100 miles an hour and then weakened as it moved inland. It's now been downgraded, as Bryant mentioned, to a tropical storm. We have reports from all across Florida this morning, starting in Vero Beach, which was in the bullseye when Aaron hit the coast. NBC's Kenley Jones is there this morning, and he joins us live. Kenley, good morning. Good morning, Matt. A long night of waiting is over for residents here in Vero Beach and all along Florida's central coast. Hurricane Aaron has come and gone. High winds and heavy rain around the eye of the storm took their toll, knocking out power along the beach. But early reports indicate that damage is far less severe than might have been expected. At Fort Pierce, just south of where the eye came ashore, about 300 elderly residents spent the night in a shelter. For some, like 85-year-old Helen Hunt, it was a terrifying experience. Well, I'm in Florida 23 years, and I never saw anything as bad as this. I mean, so far as the weather was concerned. And I was frightened. I really was frightened. So I'm alone. Others, like George Lucius, took Aaron in stride. They don't uh, surprise me about those storms out there. Edie Bertley, a nurse's aide, volunteered to take care of sick patients. I've usually been able to stay home and kind of weather it out and watch it on TV as it unfolds and everything. This is kind of tense. <laughs> I don't know what's happening out there. At daybreak this morning, city officials here in Vero Beach began making preliminary damage estimates. Happily, they, happily, they say, it appears light. Matt? Kenley Jones in Vero Beach this morning. Thank you very much, Kenley. Up the coast from Vero Beach is Satellite Beach. If you're looking at a map of Florida that's very close to Cape Canaveral, Michael Williams is there in Satellite Beach this morning, and he joins us live. Michael, good morning. How's it there? Good morning, Matt. Still awfully windy here. A long night for the big and small alike, including this small endangered sea turtle, which was literally blown away from its normal nesting site on the beach. As for residents, the aftermath of Aaron will mean days and weeks of cleanup and repair work. Boats rocked wildly at anchor throughout the night as Aaron swept in from the Atlantic, heavy sheets of rain pelting this area, which has already been saturated with rain over the past several months, so flooding could be a big concern, and lots of people taking shelter inland. 
in this region, up to 75,000 people are without electricity this morning. No word on when it will be restored. The good news is no reports of any serious injuries. My, Michael, I mentioned just north of you is Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. Did the folks at NASA batten down the hatches? Yes, they certainly did. The Space Shuttle Endeavour had been out on the launch pad. Its launch, which was scheduled for later this week, was delayed because of O-ring problems. But as a safety precaution, they moved the Endeavour inside the huge vehicle assembly building. All right, Michael, thanks very much. Take care of the little turtle. We appreciate it. All right, even this tropical storm, Erin is likely to make a mess as she cuts across the state and then heads for the Gulf of Mexico. In Erin's path to the Gulf is the city of Tampa, and that's where we find NBC's Frederica Whitfield this morning. Frederica, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Well, Erin has lost its hurricane strength, but it is picking up speed as a tropical storm. The center is heading about 17 miles per hour west towards the Tampa Bay area. It's expected to hit about 30 miles north of here by 9 a.m. It's expected to pack about 50 mile per hour winds and drop about three to four inches of rain. Those are significantly milder conditions than first expected. People thought they'd be dealing with flooding of about 10 to 15 inches. But nevertheless, folks are bracing for the worst. The storm could possibly even pick up more strength as it heads over the Gulf and heads towards the Panhandle. Frederica, I've never been to Tampa. Are there low-lying areas there that are being evacuated at all? Well, right now there is a voluntary evac evacuation order in effect in the low-lying areas and in a lot of the trailer park areas. People are urged to just stay tuned to the radio stations and the television stations to see if they need to then make a mandatory evacuation. But she's bucking for a promotion just to gust away from becoming a hurricane again. Right now she's out in the Gulf of Mexico off the Florida Panhandle. The reason Aaron's not being called a hurricane is because she's got to get about 70 miles an hour. A storm has to blow over 74 miles an hour to be called a hurricane. And the eye of the storm is about 65 miles south of uh, Apalachicola, Florida. But the people who live there are already feeling it. What you're looking at right now is a live picture from that town. You can see how windy it is. It's raining. But from what we're told, this is not the worst that Aaron has to offer there yet. The storm is expected to get uh, a lot harder at any minute. Aaron did do some damage in Tampa. Power lines there were knocked down, trees uprooted, siding ripped off houses. More than a million people lost power throughout Florida. Some of them may have to do without it for a few days, but I'll tell you the windsurfers didn't mind at all. Aaron made it a great day on the bay. Rosanna? John, the sailing wasn't nearly as smooth for the crew of a gambling ship. A few days ago, they decided to ride out the storm about 90 miles out in the Atlantic. That turned out to be a deadly mistake. Their ship went down off of Cape Canaveral in 20-foot seas. Lynn Gordon has that story for you. Three people who were on board the Club Royale cruise ship are still missing tonight. Eight people who were rescued at sea earlier this afternoon were brought here to Patrick Air Force Base, all after their cruise ship sank about 90 miles from here. They tried to escape Hurricane Aaron's fury. Instead, they ran right into it. Eleven crew members on board the Club Royale gambling boat when it began to sink about 90 miles off the coast of Melbourne. Oh, the weather was so bad that the, the ship was uh, rolling too much and one of the water side doors started leaking and make a big list. And the ship went down. The Coast Guard and Air Force plucked seven crew members off two rafts Another was rescued by a passing vessel, but three people are still missing. Pam Wood's husband, the cruise line president, is one of them. What is it like knowing that your husband's out there on those roads? It's not very good. It's not very good at all. At one point, there were three people trying to get in the basket at one time. Uh, only one person at a time could enter the basket, so it was a process of trying to pry them, the three other people, off the basket and uh, get the one person in at a time. It was raining where we were. The seas were about 20 feet. Winds were about 35 knots. The uh, visibility was good, though. We, could see, we had about two-mile visibility, and the ceilings were about 700 feet, so it wasn't that big a problem for us. The search has been called off for tonight, but the Air Force and the Coast Guard say they'll be back out searching these waters again tomorrow. Near Cocoa Beach, I'm Lynn Gordon reporting for Fox News. Okay, well, Aaron's caused a lot of problems for boaters. Off the Florida Panhandle, a father and daughter were blown out to sea in their small raft. The Coast Guard is looking for them. Aaron also sank a tugboat off the coast of Georgia. All five men on board were rescued. Well, Nick's been keeping his eye on the eye of the storm for you. He's here now with our first on Fox weather. Nick? John, we are so close to having a hurricane once again because as you look at the very latest satellite picture with me, look at that. 
that to me is pretty obvious. It looks like the eye of the hurricane is trying to form again here in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. And we've been keeping an eye on the reports from Hurricane Hunter aircraft that are flying in out of the storm, and they have reported winds of over hurricane force. So I would not be surprised if at 11 o'clock the National Hurricane Center comes out and makes this another hurricane again. So, and there you can see on the radar, notice how again this sort of area is, is opened up, meaning the precipitation wrapping around the eye as it passes to the uh, south of Apalachicola. These are the latest coordinates, 288 north, 849 west, and the hurricane warning now extends all the way to Louisiana. I'll be back with a full stats on Aaron and our forecast, which is hot, later in the 10 o'clock news. John? Andrew, the hurricane.